Hayamet University in the first year, and this semester we started learning processing, which is a programming language with the purpose of teaching the fundamentals of computer programming for those who are starting to learn code. In processing, you can make applications and applets. In my opinion, processing is a very basic software and easy to use. It has a simple interface, good for beginners. And in the course unit, introduction of programming and problem solving, we had to make a minigame, the final project, inspired in another game called Cowboy, which the objective is to reach the final, the red square, avoiding the obstacles, and if you touch a geometric form like a rectangle or a circle, the level resets, like a game over. You have to be very close from a geometric form to make it go away, making your path clear. So, I washed my hands and started working. I drew some ideas, like a mouse that tries to grab a piece of cheese, then returns to the hole, while the cats will try to catch you, and you have to throw fishes, so they will go away with the fish. They only ask for these aspects. 1. In this project, you have to create three different levels, where there is a difficulty increase. 2. You need to have three different obstacles. 3. There's an obstacle that will interfere with the other one. 4. There's an obstacle that will show up 5 times in the same level. 5. All elements must be implemented using classes. Then you can add your stuff. Now let's start coding. I wanted to start from the main menu, but first I have to set the resolution and the frame rate. Creating a function setup. The function setup is only called once. Everything inside of this function it executes only once after opening the game. And I need to create a function that is called every frame. And that function is the function draw. Then I set the background with a color. Testing the game, it only shows this window with a specific color in the background. Then I decide to create some static variables, like the current level and the current window. The video game has a lot of buttons in the interface. So it makes the things easier if I create a class named button. I made a constructor that will set the position, the size and the text that I want. Next, I created the functionality. I made a condition that will check if the mouse is inside or outside of the button, that will change the colors and the size. I wrote another function that will check if the mouse button was pressed. Each window has a proper number. Like the main menu is the number 0, level selection is the number 1, options is the number 2 and help is the number 3. If you press a button it will change the window number, it always draws the window according to the window number. Now if I test the game, it will change the window if I press a button and there's a back button to return to the main menu. Then I start coding the controls based in functions where the key D that makes you move to the right is a number 0 and the key A to move to the left is a number 1. So this gives you multiple controls. I created a class named level. It is where your level is drawn. So everything is well organized. And I made a constructor in this class where you can set the traps quantity, the number of cuts that you want in this level and their velocity. I start coding the gameplay logic. I added a player class, which draws the player, making it playable. It moves when the key is pressed. But first, I wrote the constructor that will set his initial position, his velocity when walking, and the ray of the circle. Then I drew the aim, that casts a line from the player to the mouse position. To make the aim, I used the hatan2 function, and that will calculate the mouse position minus the player position, and it will return an angle. After having the angle, I have to set the distance of the end of the line, knowing that it needs to start from the player position. Now testing the game, I start a new game and there's a circle that's your player and it's casting a line in the direction of the mouse and also I can move to the left and to the right. I created another class named projectile, I made the constructor and this is a simple one that will set the initial position and the direction where the projectile will move. I made some functions in the functionality that will draw and make the animations. And another function that will detect if this projectile is out of the window, where if yes, it will destroy itself. 
and to cast a projectile in one direction I define two vectors. The first is the player position and the second one is the mouse position. Where calculating the mouse position minus the player position, it gives you the direction from the origin to a vector. It means it will move in that direction. But the projectile velocity can change, so I normalize the value, so which means my direction, or my vector, will change to a length of 1. Next, to change the velocity, I can multiply by a number. So now you throw fishes, pressing the mouse button. And I added a call down. So after you throw a fish, you have to wait some time to throw again. Now if I test the game, I can move around while I throw fishes. And if you notice, it has a cold on. When the fish goes out of your window, it always destroys itself. Now let's create the obstacles. Heading another page, I created a new class that I called Obstacle. I made a constructor that will set the geometric form, the position, the size and the velocity that I want, the color, etc. Then in the functionality I made a function that will draw the obstacle according to the number of the geometric form. Going to the class level, I wrote the obstacles. It will create the obstacles in the loading synth function. At the playing synth function it will draw them. In the class player I created a basic collision too. And returning to the class level, I made the logic. If the player collision is inside of a geometric form, it resets the level. Testing the game, if I touch the obstacle, it will reset. And if I'm close to the obstacle, it will move away, making my path clear. And if you notice, the level it generates. Now it is time to add some enemies. I created another class named enemy, but in this game the enemy will be created and called inside the class obstacle, because the enemy is only created when interacting with an obstacle. We have the game, and we have different windows, main menu, options, and inside of the level there's a player, a group of fishes, and the obstacles, that every obstacle has a shell that is called enemy. The enemy will follow you making the same system like the projectile. But this time it always updating its direction. So if the player moves, the enemy will change direction, moving always towards the player. I created a little bar so you can see your progress while interacting with the obstacle. You have to wait some time because you are deactivating the trap. And I add some collisions to the cat. Now if the player touches the cat, it resets the level. A game over. I have to make a system that if the fish eats the cat, this one will grab it and go. I created a new class this time named Cheese, creating its own variables, its own constructor and functionality. And the obstacles will have three stages. The red color means it's not activated, the yellow color means the cats are coming, and the green means safety and it's moving from your path. If you are close to an obstacle, you will see the little bar, and after the obstacle is activated, a cat will show up and try to catch you. And you can throw fishes, they will catch it, and they will go away. I completed the first stage, now I have to return to the hole, but the final obstacle is coming. A lot of cats are coming to catch you, and you have to throw fishes, making the obstacle go away and you can return to your hole with no problems. I start to simplify the code, reduce the number of lines. Everything is working, but there's something missing yet. I wanted to add more stuff. In the player class, I had more stuff in the controls. Pressing W, the player moves up, and S to move down. I created an extra collision, so you can interact with the trap from other angles. We have to stay close to interact pressing E. But you should not touch the trap, or your player gets trapped. After interacting with the trap, you will obtain a key fragment, and after you have all the key fragments, you can create a key, a master key, that will unlock the cage, that inside has a piece of cheese. Then I drew some stuff, a mouse, a cat, the cage, cheese and other stuff, with GIMP software. Pressing E, 
you can interact with the obstacle. If you right click, you can show or hide your aim. Left click, you can shoot fishes. With Soundtrap, I composed some music and I also created some effect sounds. I spent a lot of time organizing this project. When creating a new level, I just have to increase the numbers of the constructor level. I will create two more levels. And I have to create levels I have, so people can play the level they want. The level is always randomizing, so every time you open the game, it randomizes all the three levels. I created a small introduction when you open the game. You can skip it, pressing any key of your keyboard. And I created a button, which if you click it, it will open your internet browser that will open this video you are watching. Pressing level selection, it will show the 10 levels. Going to the final level, you will notice a difficulty increase. And that's basically my work. I skip a lot of steps, but I'm glad I did this project in time. I had a lot of work, because I had to start this project from the beginning again. Thanks for watching, see you next time!